This venue is amazing. I love it so much. I love it so much. Hey everyone, welcome to Reactathon. I'm so excited that we're all here in person, getting to, to meet again and see some old faces, some new faces. Uh, it's gonna be a really fun couple days, so I'm excited and really honored to be able to kick things off tonight. Uh, tonight I'm gonna be talking about really where React is at today and where it's headed in the future. So I'm Lee, I'm the Director of Developer Relations at Brussel. And uh, has anybody here used Brussel before? Show of hands, a few. Wow, amazing, I love that. Okay, I'm glad there's some people who have used Brussel. Uh, if you haven't, Brussel is a platform for basically making fast websites. And we're also the creators of a React framework called Next.js. So at Brussel, I lead our community and education efforts. I spend a lot of time talking to developers about how to build with React and how to build fast websites and great user experiences. So as you also heard, Vercel is the presenting sponsor today. Come check out our booth and talk to the Vercel team. We'd love to, to show you around the product and, and help you out with your next apps. So learning and investing in React was the best thing I've done in my career. Seriously, it's helped me become a better web developer, land multiple jobs, and connect with so many amazing people in the community like you all. So for the next 20 minutes here today, I want to talk about the state of React, kind of where it's at today, where it's headed, and why you should get really excited about the future of React. So let's start off by talking about you. Yes, all of you in the crowd here today, uh, whether you're new, experienced, aspirational, seasoned React developers, I want to talk about a parallel between architects, like building architects, and developers. I found a lot of parallels between these two in my career, and I think it makes for uh, a fun analogy. So just entertain me here today as we, as we consider this analogy. So a React developer often takes a list of requirements and constraints and uses them to design a solution using some tools that they're familiar with. OK. So does an architect. <laughs> they, they take some tools, they design a solution, and they use some tools that they're proficient with. You kind of see where I'm going with this. So let's imagine that you're all architects, right? You've just completed your training and your education, and you're ready to design this new world uh, to craft it more beautiful than before. I, I won't go into it too far. <laughs> Maybe even something like this, you know? Just a quick drive away from where we're at here today in Berkeley, California. But to design this solution and to build this world, you need tools. And the same goes for developers. And today, when building for the web, many developers are choosing to build with React. So I want to talk about why React. Why did React become so popular? And it might sound strange, given we're all here today right, at a React conference. But I think it's helpful to recap how one small open source library created in 2013 has led to you know, hundreds of new friends here together today at Reactathon. You know, we, love, we love a good meme here. React enables developers to build great user interfaces. The original goal of the library still holds true today, providing these primitives and these patterns for architecting great web experiences. It provides the blueprint, another architecture reference. <laughs> React made building with components accessible to everyone. And when developers think about React, they think in components. One of my absolute favorite parts about the React documentation is the piece called Thinking in React. This really helped me understand the mental model to deconstruct user interfaces and to think in kind of the component-based building blocks. React succeeded, though, not just because of the software or because of the product. It succeeded because of the community. There's millions of React developers, thousands of React libraries. Some of you even work on those libraries. And 
a wonderful community really helping educate and train the next generation of web developers and React developers. That is why React is one of the most popular ways of building for the web today. And React has been evolving. Well, it stayed true to building great user interfaces. That's the core of what React does. You might have noticed a shift in how developers are actually using React today. If we look at React in 2022, you'll see that there's a bunch of frameworks built on top of React that abstract things like routing or rendering or data fetching to try to provide a great developer experience and simplify this process for development teams. There's design tools that compile to React. You can drag and drop in a visual editor and move around components that are actually hooked up to real React components. This is Plasmic. There's visual editors for interactive content that allow you to seamlessly merge your React, you know, your JSX, your components, with your content, whether that's Markdown or, or some remote location. There's even variants of React that run on every type of device. You want to make a 3D game in the browser? You want to make a mobile app? You absolutely can. Yeah. <laughs> Expo. We love Expo. <laughs> React has delivered on providing excellent tools to developers. And while the type of applications that we might have built at the start were pretty small, they've really grown to enable React developers to build anything they can imagine on the web. I think that's really powerful. But it's not just React that's evolving, either. The web is drastically different today than at the start of React or even just a few years ago. First, the global adoption of smartphones is growing more and more every year, with the majority of the world just seconds away from a web browser. And that has a lot of implications, because that web browser is the largest app store in the world. Anyone can put content on the web in seconds and share it with a global audience. This democratization of the internet has really created this vibrant world where you can build incredible web experiences that would have previously required specialized hardware. And finally, it's not just a single browser. All browsers have been working together better than ever with cross-browser cross support at an all-time high. So whether it's things like CSS Grid or Flexbox or lazy loaded images, all these things are now available in all your major browsers, which means less polyfills and less JavaScript that you need to ship to your visitors. And it's still getting better yet. This is a project called Interop 2022 between some of the major browser vendors that's working really closely together on shipping impactful features across all browsers. This is going to be great. I know as, as, a, as a web developer, as a React developer, the less that I have to think about is targeting one specific browser and the more uh, crafts browser adoption we have, the better. So let's just quickly recap. React is really popular, right? And it's evolving with the web to support this global audience and work seamlessly across all the different browsers. So does that mean that it's easy to build a React application today? If we go back to that blueprint that React gave us, it's clear what the end goal and the outcome is here, right? We want to build our skyscraper. But the steps between blueprint and skyscraper you might be confused about, or you might you know, leave a little to be desired. If we really lean into that architecture analogy, right? How would we build a foundation that's resistant to strong winds? What type of materials would we use uh, based on the environment? What would we do about our supply chain? Like, we could go really far into that analogy. I'll, I'll, I'll save you there. But when we look at the web today, we see that while it might seem simple on the surface, a lot of developers are actually faced with what I like to call the iceberg of the web. There's a lot more than meets the eye. And React is incredibly powerful, but this iceberg of complexity, things like images and fonts and scripts and internationalization, React has historically been less prescriptive about the solutions for some of these things and has kind of delegated this to the community, whether it's libraries or frameworks, to come up with solutions to some of these things. And I think this is a blessing and a curse. So it's great that you can npm install React hyphen basically anything and get it working in your application right away. But as React has grown to be one of the most popular ways of building online today, the community, I feel, is really looking for stronger suggestions and deeper integration into the tools that they're using. 
So React is evolving for the future, and I want to talk a little bit about that today. There's a lot of hard parts to building user interfaces, and I like to think about React now as a collection of solutions to those problems. Um, architecture primitives for building user interfaces. I think that's, I think that's really powerful. The, the architect analogy here, developers and architects still have these fundamental building blocks that they use to create their structures. Maybe for an architect, it's the materials we're seeing, and maybe for a developer, it's your components, right? But the type of problems that React developers are looking to solve are requiring more advanced tools and more strong suggestions, like I mentioned. So I want to talk about a few web architecture problems for building great user interfaces, and then talk about how React and the future of React is helping solve these. So first, I want to show the most relevant content immediately without waiting for JavaScript, OK? Secondly, I want to instantly respond to user input, OK? And third, I want to navigate between different screens in my application without blocking any user input. Now, notice that I didn't say components, I didn't say JSX, I didn't say React anywhere in here. There's nothing React specific. These are just good problems of building user interfaces at scale. So how is React evolving to help solve problems like this? Let's first talk about showing the most relevant content and using streaming server rendering using suspense. We've, we've heard of suspense before, hopefully. We want to show HTML to our visitors instantly before any of our JavaScript files have loaded. Now, previously, solutions that were you know, your own custom server re rendering environment or using a framework, they're essentially all or nothing. Either you have all of your HTML or none of it. And if I'm loading this form component in the, the right here, if that required fetching data from some API and it was slow, we're essentially as slow as our slowest component. So it would block rendering until all this content was shown. With improvements in React 18, we can show this interface immediately and then stream in content updates as they're available. So we can suspend or pause rendering while we're waiting on our form component to load using suspense on the server. Suspense is a concurrent feature of React, and it lets you write asynchronous code as if it was synchronous. So let's look at how that can enable us to instantly respond to user input. While we're in the middle of rendering this suspended component of the form, we can still interact with the rest of the page and not block the main thread, thanks to React 18. So to create this amazing experience, React has essentially re-architected itself in the past two major versions to deeply support asynchronous code and scheduling. And concurrent features like suspense are really opt-in and available only as you use them. Now, notice I said concurrent features and not concurrent mode. And that's because React 18 is really embracing this incremental adoption strategy and allowing you to, instead of having a app level toggle, it's only as you use the features. So I love that. I think that's amazing. I'm, I'm very excited for that. So React 18 is giving us primitives for these solutions, for building these great user interfaces. And then frameworks can take these and deeply integrate them into their router, into their data fetching layer, into their server rendering environment, and help solve that all or nothing data fetching problem I was talking about, and give a really great developer experience when using asynchronous code. Uh, I'm personally extremely excited about this, and I think the future of React is going to be amazing. The last one I want to talk about is navigating without having to block any user input. We want our server rendered applications to really feel like an app. And when navigating between routes, the user shouldn't be blocked from interacting with that interface. So with React 18, we have some new features that allow us to tell React which parts of the interface are urgent. So if more urgent things come in, like clicks or key presses, we can prioritize the most important work. These new features are pretty amazing. And I'm excited to share here today at Reactathon that Next.js is releasing a new routing system that takes full advantage of React 18. Woo! This new Next.js router supports nested layouts and nested routes, the ability to fetch data in layouts, and it's the first router that's designed for server components. And the best part is that it's 100% incrementally adoptable. You'll be able to use this router for 
complex dashboard layouts, advanced modal routing, and way more. I'm incredibly excited about this. This is something that I know people here who've been using Next.js have been looking for for a long time. But uh, you'll hear more about this from me in the future. I just wanted to share a quick update with my React friends here today at Reactathon. So let's go back to everyone here for you. And what does this mean for me, the architect, the developer? Whether you're building a small blog with React, like my site right there, <laughs> or some of the largest sites in the world, React is built to grow with you. React is your reliable toolkit. These tools have stood the test of time. They're valuable, purposeful, and they're well-designed. And the future of React gives you new tools that you can incrementally adopt into your toolkit. Frameworks simplify this experience, allowing you to build bigger and taller buildings. But the fundamental building blocks and the architecture of React remains the same. So in summary, React is your blueprint of architecture primitives for building user interfaces. New React features are tools that you can incrementally adopt into your workflow. Frameworks give you an opinionated tool to build a strong foundation, allowing you to scale your skyscraper to the tallest of heights. And the summary of these allows you to craft really great user experiences. I hope that you're as excited about the future of React as I am. Thank you so much. Awesome.